In this video, we learn how to calculate value at risk using the historical method. But before that, let us understand what is value at risk. Value at risk is a measure of the risk of loss from investments. It estimates how much a set of investments might lose, given normal market conditions and in a specific time period such as a day. For example, a one-day 95% value at risk of $2 million means that we are 95% confident that loss would not exceed $2 million on any given day. In this example, we have 1000 randomly arranged profit and loss data. Notice that the sample data is randomly generated using the RAND function of Excel. Also note that we have used the norm s inverse function to ensure that the data generated follows normal distribution. Here, we feed the random number as a probability to the inverse function, which in turn returns the z values. We have multiplied it with 3500, just to increase the value of the profit or loss number, for better understanding. Notice how the profit and loss numbers change as we refresh the data. Now, let's go over the steps to create this model. The first step is to decide a confidence level. We have initially set it here at 99%. We can change it to any number we like. Next, we determine the tail risk, that is, 1 minus alpha. It comes out to be 5% in this case. Then, we find the number of observations in the tail, n, where n is 5% of 1000, that is 50. Finally, we sort the data and value at risk is calculated as the n plus 1 number, or 51st in this case. However, sometimes it may not be wise to sort the data as we may need it for other purposes. In this case, we use an Excel function called small to find the n plus 1 number. The formula goes as, small, the array from which to search and the k at number to search, 51 in our case. This gives us the 95% VAR of 5744. Next, let's explore how to create this chart. This is a histogram of the profit and loss data. It also displays the value at risk number. To create a default histogram chart, select the data. Go to insert, and select the histogram option. But, we would also like to show the VAR number on this plot. We can add a data series to plot the VAR number but it does not get displayed. Another way to do this, is to create our own histogram using a column chart. To do that, we first need to create the bins for the histogram. First, we find the minimum number. And then, add 1000 to it to create the first bin. We now drag this down to create multiple bins. To create a count of the number of data in each bucket, we use the frequency function of Excel. To do that, select the range where you want to calculate the results, and then type in the first cell as, frequency. Select the data range, and then select the range of cells containing the bins. Then press, Ctrl, Shift and Enter. This makes it an array formula and all the numbers get populated. Now, let's create a column chart to populate this data. To do that, select the data, then go to insert, and select the column chart. This gives us a chart that looks and works like a histogram. Let's make a few minor adjustments to it. Right click on the chart and select format data axis. Reduce the gap width. 
This makes it more like a histogram. Next, we want to add the value at risk point to this chart. To do that, click on the chart, go to chart design, and select data. Here, create the new series. And click on OK. The chart may look weird now since the VAR had a very large number and it is plotted with bucket counts, which are very small. To correct this, select change chart type, go to combo. Ensure that series 1 is a column while series 2, that is, the VAR point is a line chart with markers. Check the secondary option axis. This creates two different axes for the two different data series. Notice the dot, this is our VAR point. We can now format it as we like. Change the marker type. Size. And color. We can also add data labels to it, displaying the value at risk number, and change its formatting or font color. Thus, we have successfully created the histogram, which gets updated as we refresh the data. Now let's create the second chart. It is a cumulative probability chart. First, we create the cumulative probabilities in column O. The first one is simple, the number of observations in the bucket divided by the total number of observations. For remaining buckets, we count the total number of observations till that bucket, that is, total of first and second for bucket 2. Total of first, second and third for bucket 3, and so on. To do this, we use the sum function. But notice, that we have freezed the first data range. This allows us to keep adding new numbers as we move down the column, without losing the previous data sets. Then divide this number by the total observations. Then, we plot the buckets and the cumulative probabilities on a scatter plot. We choose the option to smoothen the lines. Thus, we have the cumulative probability chart. Now, let's add the value at risk point to this chart. On the x-axis we have the var number and on the y-axis we have the probability. The point might get lost along the line. To select the particular VAR point, double click on the line to open format data points. And select series 2 from the options. It highlights the VAR point. Now we can add a marker to it. Make necessary formatting changes. And add data labels to it. As we had previously done for the histogram chart, we can decide what we want to display in the chart. And so, we have made the cumulative probability chart as well. You have created a simulation model to calculate VAR using the historical method.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.